Hey guys, um, welcome back to Dauntingly Diana. This is a video I have been meaning to put out forever. I think I've probably recorded it twice now and <laughs> this is me working on my third try. Um, I have like a block right now for um, doing YouTube videos so that's why I've been sticking with the shorts lately just because it's easier for me to do. My attention span um, can handle that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, um, I'm really coming to terms now with the fact that I do have ADHD and I'm starting to really learn a lot about it um, this year so it's, uh, it's been a time. I had no idea that I had ADHD, um, and my daughter has it, but I thought that, you know, um, her dad was quite uncontrollable in school and stuff, so I just assumed that it came from him. Silly me. <laughs> it came from me as well. Um, I guess I did a lot of masking, and that's um, basically why it didn't come out. We didn't know a whole lot about um, ADHD back in the day either, and I know with my anxiety being so bad that I feel like um, once I started taking meds for my anxiety is when I started to realize that um, my brain was not working as well <laughs> as I thought it should be. And, um, basically I think my anxiety was causing my ADHD, um, to be, be less, like I was masking it due to that. Um, and then because I was just so anxious all of the time and constant, like, and they just, uh, gave me like a diagnosis of general anxiety disorder. Um, definitely have social anxiety as well, which a lot of people with ADHD are misdiagnosed as um, from the time I can remember. And uh, I was really, really, really anxious about like being in public, about being around other people. I always thought other people were talking about me or making comments about me or... Um, if I went into a store somewhere, I had like the worst time trying to get, um, go up to the counter to like do the thing that you're supposed to do when you're at a store. <laughs> like, I don't know why that I just had like such a block for it. I used to get my brother to go for me. I'd get my friends to go in for me. If I really had to, I would go. Um, but it would take a lot of like persuading and <laughs> a lot of work for me to get into a store to go do something like that. Um, when Zoe was a baby, when she was little, my daughter, I'll just say she's 27 now, so <laughs> um, this is quite a while ago. Um, I wouldn't leave the house. I didn't want to. And so I ended up having to like force myself to leave because I was a single mother and had to get groceries and had to go do things with myself. Um, and that was the toughest thing I ever had to do. Like I literally would have just died in that house. I would have stayed there forever. Um, but I had to force myself to do it. I went out, got groceries, did the things I had to do. Um, but it was always, always, always a struggle. Like, um, butterflies in your stomach for like the whole day leading up to going out. Um, constant worry about what's going to happen while you're out, what you're going to do. You're constantly going through the plan in your mind. Like, what am I going to do when I get out there? Um, hopefully it goes all to plan. And if it doesn't, then it's like panic and you want to go home <laughs> immediately. Um, I remember one day I took the first time I went grocery shopping myself with Zoe. And I had walked over to the grocery store because I didn't have a car at the time. <clears throat> It was fairly close, like two blocks away. Um, and yeah, so I um, walked her all the way there, had a hard time getting her into the cart because little me and I was trying to like put her in and her legs were like, like bending every time I tried to, tried to put them in the thing. So this guy helped me to straighten her out when he was coming in. And, uh, and then she was like fussing throughout the grocery store. And, and then I was like, I'm just going to put her on the ground because like, I don't know what else to do. She'll be quiet for a little bit if she's like holding onto the cart and I'll, you know, watch her that way. Tried that and she was knocking everything over and I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> so I just left a full cart of groceries, took her by the hand and just walked back home. <laughs> and I was like, I'll get groceries tomorrow. <laughs> and I did. I, went, I got a cab and I ended up going that way. Um, yeah. Um, so it was a struggle for me for a long time. As soon as I started taking um, anxiety meds, I just, I didn't care anymore. I could get in my car like last second and be like, we're going, <laughs> let's go do this. Like, what are we planning today? Um, I can go, I could go in a store, I could order food, I could do things that like I would never do before. Um, still have a little issue with like going inside of um, a store and like talking to a person at a counter uh, at times, like certain things like, um, stress me the hell out like <laughs> I don't know why they just do um, 
but yeah, and so it all stems back to either ADHD, the social anxiety, I'm not sure which one. I'm not, I've not been fully diagnosed as ADHD, but I have all of the signs and symptoms of it. Um, my brain's racing all the time. I'm constantly fidgeting, constantly like moving around. I remember sitting and watching everybody at a, a work meeting, like while I was in, uh, like a, not a Zoom meeting, but a team meeting. And uh, I'm looking at all of the people sitting in their offices and everybody's just like, doing this <laughs> and I'm like look at me and I'm like all over the place and my head's moving and I'm just like what is my problem <laughs> like I'm just constantly going um I have restless leg syndrome I'm like I'm even moving in my sleep like I just am constantly moving 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 um uh, this is Charles by the way I think I forgot to introduce him he's my pickle squishmallow <laughs> and I really love him and he's very comfy today so he's gonna stick with me while I'm talking about these hard things um yeah so um struggle with that kind of stuff you know um still learning all about the ADHD I'm not sure if I want to get like an official diagnosis I haven't figured it out yet because right now I'm dealing with some other stuff that I really need to figure out um and that's another thing that's like this year has just been awful like it's been the worst year ever absolutely um so we started off with like uh we had greg's surgeries a couple of surgeries he had to do and then we had the surgeries then we had a death in the family and on greg's side which was really sad um i mean everybody knew it was coming but it was still just really it was somebody that's really prominent in the family that we see at every get together so it's really sad to see her go and uh you know getting used to that and then shortly after that happened my stepmother passed away and uh, that was really jarring for me and for my uh, father and uh, had to deal with all that kind of stuff and um, yeah so after that happened I did get a little bit of money um, for the from the inheritance and I bought my cool like inflatable tent with that I was like I need to treat myself and I'll not like I never not treat myself it's terrible like I've, I'm realizing I have a bad spending habit as well <laughs> Yay! It goes along with the ADHD and the dopamine that you get from just spending and getting things, new things. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the tent ended up being like 2000 so it was a little over what I like wanted to pay for it. But I'm like, that's cool. It's just treating yourself, you know? You have $2,000. Well, let's do this. And then the tent ended up coming from Turkey and which I knew it was coming from Turkey but did not even think about customs and I got a bill from customs for $891 <laughs> so that was not expected at all so that went on my credit card fund um so a big chunk of money I wasn't expecting and then shortly after that or maybe it was before that I can't remember um we were talking about Greg going to a Pearl Jam concert because he loves Pearl Jam and that's like on his bucket list he's been wanting to do it forever um so I was like you know do it like he talked talked it over with a friend they were going to do it together so he purchases the tickets from this place um not Ticketmaster because he couldn't do it Ticketmaster way whatever I don't know what he did so he ends up paying like a thousand dollars for these two tickets and um his friend backed out yay so he used my credit card because his wouldn't work and um yeah so i never got paid back for those tickets so that's another thousand dollars i just kind of yeah. although i did get to go to the pearl jam concert and it was amazing it was really good the concert was great the trip not so much and <laughs> you'll find out why soon um, so yeah, so we had my stepmother pass away, then the thing with the tent happened, then we had the thing with the Pearl Jam tickets, um, I also had that time in, um, we went away for that vacation, and then my pills were all messed up when I came back, and my anxiety pills, so I take Effexor for those, or for anxiety, and uh, yeah, you're not supposed to just come down, or come off of that um, without weaning, because it's, um, the side effects are really bad. Um, so I, uh, like withdrawal side effects kind of a thing. And we were unexpectedly late, like three, two to three days going home. And I didn't have enough pills. So I was like three or four days without. And, uh, yeah, so that was fun. I was in such a mess. I had to take almost a week off for that. Had to get doctor's note for that. 
Um, I didn't know where I was. I was crying all the time. I was like just a freaking mess, like an absolute mess. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, wake up in the middle of the night and I'm standing in a room with a light on that I have no idea where. <laughs> like, how did I get here? What am I doing? I remember going to bed and that's it. Um, yeah, so it was, it was quite the time. So now we're into July, August. <clears throat> We um, did a camping trip the end of August, and it was fun. Um, but the second day that we woke up, and or sorry, the first day we woke up after the first night of sleeping in the tent with the cods, and my fingers were messed up. So here they are, <laughs> my my other um, ring finger and my pinky finger on this hand, the left hand, are messed up, so they don't quite stand up straight like the other ones. I can't move them as much. I've lost some strength in there. They're getting all shaky and stuff like that too. You can see the middle one wants to shake when I'm, yeah. So, and um, so yeah, I can't type. I, ha I have a job where I very much so need to type and I need to type fast. And I was not able to do that. So I had to take more time off work. So here I am. I'm not working right now. I'm on, I guess, EI until I can get back to, um, back to typing again. And it was really bad that day. Like they've gotten better. Um, but the first day I had no feeling whatsoever. And I went to go pick up a stove, the stove to make coffee. And I walked it over to the, um, to the table, brand new table. With like, um, it's like an aluminum, um, slats on the top and dropped the stove right onto that brand new table, brand new stove as well. Um, luckily, no damage to the stove, but the table did get dented, so that was great. Um, loved that table too. <laughs> so we're going to have to find a way to maybe like pound out the little dent in it, and we'll see what we can do. If not, it is what it is. It's just a little dent, not the end of the world. Um, yeah, so off work now. It's been two months, and three months, I think, actually, because it was near the end of September that I went off work. So yeah, we must have done camping the end of September. And... Um, yeah so your girl um no it was end of august stupid yeah it was the end, very end of august we were just coming into september when it happened and then we went for the concert so we were away for two days for that we had absolutely no money because your girl was not deciding not re realizing that she was going to be out of work at this time of course shit happens right um and uh, yeah, so we didn't have any money. We didn't rent a hotel room because we couldn't find one that was for a decent price So we decided and I've been watching a lot of like overlanding and stuff like that because I'm right into camping and I'm totally obsessed with it. I can't stop um, I'm like, let's sleep in the car. We can do that <laughs> Great idea um, Yeah so basically you just find like a, a spot that you can stay for the night and there's like apps out there that you can have like for um park for the night I think it is and then there's um some other like overlanding and some other camping type things that you can um look up and I used the park for night app and we ended up parking in this like one of those like ride and go um or park and go I guess I think that's what they're called so basically you park your car and then you can go and take the train or um or the subway or whatever for the day and then come back later pick up your car and go instead of like you know, um, having to walk to a train station or whatever, take a cab. Um, yeah, so we stayed in one of those the first night and it was actually not too bad. Um, we were right in behind a McDonald's that so was open like 24 hours. So it was like perfect. And there was gas stations across the street if we needed something to eat or drink or whatever. Great. <clears throat> so, um, the first night I slept great. Greg slept terribly. Unfortunately, he's tall and, um, we didn't have enough room in the back, so he was crunched up and, um, didn't have a good one. I'm, I don't know how I managed to sleep that first night, but I did. I slept most of it. I must have just been really tired. <laughs> and then, um, the next night we had the concert, so we went to the concert, but the day we had was horrible because we were just spending the day trying to, like, just waste time until the concert started. So we're driving around, driving around. I'm like, let's just go park somewhere because this is stupid. Like we're wasting gas and whatever. So we parked in this parking spot that I found on the park for night. We weren't going to stay there the night. We we're just going to stay there for a little bit just to like waste time. 
So <laughs> we park there. As soon as we park, I'm like, Frig, I have to go pee. I'm like, oh, we should have gone pee before I came here, but whatever. I'm sure there'll be places around that we can go. I look over and the, we're like in this area where there's like a bridge and there's like a restaurant, a couple restaurants, I think. And then like some other things. The restaurant was hoity-toity and it was like packed full of people. So I was like, I'm not going in there and asking. So I, it's fine. We'll walk down the street a little bit. I'm sure we'll find something. Not a dang thing. <laughs> so I was like, this is wonderful. Um, yeah. So get back in the car and I'm like, let's go. We only parked there for like 10 minutes. It felt like so stupid and a waste of money. Um, so then we leave there and we drove around for at least an hour, at least, and um, found, eventually found a bathroom, but it was like in the slums and it was like, um, they had locks on the doors. So you had to go and like get them to open it. So the girl's like, yeah, yeah, it's open. And then I get over there and the woman's washroom is like out of order. <laughs> so it's like just the men's. I'm like, this friggin' sucks. I'm like, and it was so disgusting in that bathroom. I'm like, please just stand outside the door while I go pee. I went in, went pee, came back out. So that's fine. Go to the concert. Concert was great. And then when we get out of the concert, I'm looking at the park for night app. I'm like, let's just go back to that same spot. It was perfect. So we get on the um, <laughs> on the, the road and we get to this like exit that we need to get on. And it's on the, um, like the I-5 or something. I don't know. And we get on, um, we go to get on the exit and it's blocked. So we're like, well, fuck. So then, um, excuse my language. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to have to beat this stuff out. I'm just talking like you're just my friends, you know? Um, yeah. So then we get off the, um, go to the next one. That one's closed too. <laughs> And the um, like maps kept trying to bring us back to that same spot over and over and over again. So we're like, oh my god. So eventually we get down like three or four stops or exits and it's still blocked. And he's like, he's getting so angry at my guy. And I'm like, I don't blame him because like, what? We just want to go home. We just or we just want to go to the parking lot and sleep and then go home the next morning, kind of a thing. So we get um, to like the next one and it's still blocked. And he's like, just tell me where the next parking or what the next city is over we're going to that city and we're gonna go park there so I looked and it's in New Hampshire so we go to <laughs> we ended up going to New Hampshire driving there so it was an hour or like and a half drive or something after the concert fine um and we ended up finding a place getting ourselves all friggin set up for the night <laughs> all ready to go and it's like two o'clock in the morning and we're like just laying there kind of watching a show I'm like I think I can probably sleep now let's give it a try <laughs> And, um, and so I tried and the way that we were, we must have been like slanted a touch because we were, uh, we kept sliding down. So I like, guess we were like, I'm laying on top of a sleeping bag. So it's like, that's already making me slide down. And then on top of that, with that little bit of an angle and my legs are like crunching up and I'm like, I'm five, two, he's six, one. He's probably not having a good sleep either. I'm like, so I'm struggling, struggling, struggling. And then eventually I'm like, I'm going to have to get up and get out of this car. Like I can't, I can't stay here. I'm going to go crazy. And uh, I said that to Greg because I could hear him kind of moving. And he's like, well, do you want to just go? And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't sleep. We're on an angle. I feel like I'm not going to get comfortable. I feel like just getting up and walking around. Like, I don't know what to do. He's like, why don't we just go? He's like, I'm up now. Let's just go. So we did. We drove home at like four o'clock in the morning, um, packed everything up and then left. And I slept on the drive home. Greg did not sleep. And we got home at like 11 something. Um, yeah. And then we went, we had a quick nap. And then we went to go pick up the dogs. And um, when we got there, Dexter was acting really weird. So I was like, oh, this is not good. He wouldn't let me open the door. He was like laying in front of the door. So when you tried to push it open, it was moving him as well. And he wouldn't move. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have to push him out of the way. So I kind of like pushed him over enough so I can get in the door. And I picked him up and I went to put him on his feet and he just dropped right back down again. And I was like, this is not good. Um, I was like, well, maybe he's just um, feeling funny. Like, cause he was at his dad's. He hadn't been there for a while. I was like, let's take him home and see how he does when he gets home. See if maybe like some of the strength comes back in his legs. And if not, we'll have to go from there. Like call the, the vet and go from there. So thank God we did come home when we did because we got Dexter home maybe about a half an hour after he started to um, huff and puff a little bit. He was like, <sighs> and 
and then um, he was just like having a rough time and I gave him a little bit of food because I had noodles so I was like gave him a piece of noodle he didn't want it I went to go get a, a treat for them afterwards he didn't want that either and I kind of checked his gums to see like if he was getting enough air because he had lung cancer um, had a tumor and uh, it was stage four so um, I checked his gums and his mouth was completely white it was not good so I just picked him up. I called the bed and I was crying. I'm like, listen, I'm like, Dexter's mouth is all white. I don't know what's going on with him, but I don't think he's getting enough air and I need to take him to the vet. So they're like, we're closing in like 15 minutes. They're like, take him to Port City Emergency. So we did. And, um, and he died on the way there. So, which was really hard, <laughs> really, really hard. Cause it's, they're like your kids, right? So like they, this little guy was living with me for 15 years and I raised him and I, trained them and all that stuff so it's been tough <laughs> um yeah so we definitely came home when we did at a good time because like otherwise we wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to say goodbye um so we got a stuff bag we're like trying to calm down from that and then we get the heads up that um you know like when my stepmother had passed away we had a um a leak um, in the roof and that it just happened to show up the same day that she had the heart attack and passed away so my guy put a claim in with insurance and um, like two weeks after Dexter passed away they're like yeah we're gonna start um, taking the stuff out of the room or whatever but gave us the wrong day <laughs> like it was just a typo in the email that still like really pissed me off um, because we could have gotten things ready. They're like, grab enough stuff for a couple weeks and whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, so we have time to do that. Because they said they only do it on the weekends. So we're like, oh, okay, so we have time to do that. And I was going to, on Friday, I was going to get things ready to go. And I was like, I'm going to clear off that dresser and grab some stuff. Well, didn't they show up the next day? And we had nothing ready, <laughs> nothing at all. They're like, we'll give you five minutes to like gather some stuff but I didn't realize we're supposed to be gathering like clothes for the weeks like the couple of weeks I'm like I have no idea what to get this is the worst thing that you can do to a person that has ADHD and brain fog and stuff like I'm like blanking I'm like I have no idea what to do so I'm just taking the stuff off the top of my bedside table and I'm like what do I get I don't know what to get <laughs> like I'm just panicking and um so I grabbed just a couple of things I don't know what I even grabbed stupid things like the makeup I think I put makeup in a bag and I think I grabbed something else a couple pairs of underwear I'm like I had like two pairs of pajamas um yeah we had just come back from like um spending the night in someone's backyard because we camped in their backyard for their wedding and uh yeah so <laughs> we happened to have some stuff in a duffel bag thank god because half of that stuff was like kept me going through this time so our entire bedroom got taken apart and put into my office thank god i wasn't working because it, i would have had to take more time off like that wasn't covered by anyone um so yeah i was like just so happened to work out great that this injury happened at the same time because i would have been screwed um and the amount of noise that they made and the amount of stuff that they had in that room there's just no way i would have been able to work then that happens right around the time that my friend julia decides that she's like wants to come for a visit and we had planned out a day we're like yeah you're gonna come on the 16th it's gonna be great and then um they ended up coming like earlier than expected and so she comes and we're like put out we're on the couch and she's but she had somewhere to stay so it was okay um and we got through it it was only like a week a week and a half that we were like stuck on the couch so no big deal two weeks at the most I think and um and then we got our bedroom back which was really nice um yeah and so here we are <laughs> in the present day. So this has been like, uh, honestly, a friggin' tough year. And I also have been sick in the process. So with my stepmother passing away, I started taking meds, like extra meds, because I was worried about the stress that was coming along with that. Um, I started taking extra meds when um, we hit like, I think it was right around the time that I stopped working because... I had um, breathing issues as well, so I was going through like shortness of breath and my asthma was so bad that I was like taking my puffer 8,000 times and it still wasn't helping at all. Um, yeah, so, and which you're supposed to go to the 
hospital if that's the case but I didn't I just kept taking my puffer so I ended up like using up like four puffers in the matter of a month and I called my pharmacy and they were like what <laughs> and I'm like I'm sorry I don't know so yeah I made an appointment talked to my doctor about that and um and he had somebody that was like helping out and taking appointments while he was on I don't know if he was on vacation or had sick time or what um, so yeah, there, uh, she didn't know what to do about the hand, so that was fine. But at the same time while I was there, they had done, um, my regular, like, blood testing. Um, so, yeah, so, train of thought. Um, I ended up taking the extra pills for the, for, um, when my stepmother passed away. Then extra pills when I got sick that time, coming back from the, um, from vacation and then I had extra pills that I was taking again in like around July August or end of August I think it was when I stopped working um, because of the breathing issue I was having so all these things are like adding up right and I'm like I'm feeling stressed I'm like maybe it's the stress maybe I'm sick I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my my body right and so and then you're like is it something to worry about is it not I don't know like I mean I felt like the asthma was a little bit worrisome and then I think probably two weeks after I finally started feeling better about the asthma, um, it started again. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? So I bumped up my meds again and I'm like, this is it. Like, I need to figure out what's going on. So I called my doctor and like uh, my specialist and I'm like, I just need a little bit of guidance here. <laughs> like, can you help me? <laughs> and uh, they sent me a letter with an appointment. So I ended up going to see them. That's fine. The blood work was showing some weird stuff. So I have low hemoglobin, low um, iron, low vitamin D, and there was something else that they noticed. Oh, and um, the, okay, so it was hemoglobin, iron, vitamin D. I feel like there was one more thing. Anyway, so those things. And then, um, so a low hemoglobin means that you're losing blood from somewhere so she was asking like if I had noticed anything um nothing really was going on with me I other than like I have perimenopause for sure that's another thing that happened this year yay it's not great guys um <laughs> yeah and uh let's see what else um yeah so oh yeah I was going through that my periods were all messed up already so I was like I don't know what to tell you um, but also my stomach issues were like rearing their head as well. So I was taking for the past like three or four months before that, I was taking like two, two to three like antacids a night on top of my regular panto that I take for my stomach, um, for my like, um, acid reflux and stuff, which is pretty bad. And I also have, um, like esophageal issues. So spasms and stuff that I need to take the medication for or it gets bad. Um, and it just has always been like that. It's not like I eat like super spicy things or like have issues with like eating just only fried foods and stuff. Like I do eat regular foods. Um, it's just always been like that, unfortunately. Probably stress related, really. I'm just like a pile of fucking stress all the time. So, um, yeah. So we, she prescribed some iron. She prescribed extra. This is that extra, that doctor that was taking over from my regular family doctor. So she prescribed iron, extra tecta from my, um, or panto for my esophagus uh, issues. And then, because she thought maybe there was a ulcer, which would make sense because you can lose blood from an ulcer. So um, yeah, so that would make sense as to why the hemoglobin was low and stuff and why I was still getting the acid reflux again and having issues like that way. Um, so still waiting for all that stuff back. I went and did like a bunch of blood tests. I had to do a stool sample, which was disgusting and I never want to do that again. Um, and I also had to do like a urine test and I had to do like a bunch of other blood tests. It's just, uh, it's just a pain. Thank God I'm off work because then I got all that stuff done um, without having to take any time. Um, other than the time I'm taking right now for being on EI, <laughs> not able to work. So yeah, and money has been real tight, guys. Like it has been, I have not been this broke for like a long time. So, but we're surviving. At least we have a home over our heads. We have food in our fridge. 
we're not like starving to death or anything we're just not able to live like comfortably like we did before not that we were living super comfortably but comfortable enough that we could go to the store and grab snacks every night and like you know what I mean like now we're like hmm <laughs> I guess we're just gonna stare at the tv and have a piece of toast for our snack instead <laughs> trying to save money anyway so that is where we are at right now taking my iron taking my vitamin d i'm taking extra um tecta to help with those tummy things um and waiting on all those blood work things to come back i when i went to go see my um specialist he said that he thought um Oh, what did he do? So he was thinking that a lot of people get celiac disease with um, with Addison's, and so they kind of go together. So he's gonna, um, he wanted me to get tested for that. And then they were putting some other suggestions in place to my family doctor. So they were gonna talk about the asthma, the, um, uh, the vitamin D, and um, the possible like, I don't know, there was a couple things they were just gonna mention to him. And uh, we're gonna work at getting that all under control and hopefully I can figure out maybe my blood test will be back to normal and I won't be losing blood that'd be great but I don't really know what's going on there he said, said the numbers look fine the last time he looked but uh, he didn't really mention anything about them so um, yeah and tomorrow I have finally have an update on my hand <laughs> so this is my hand so this is um, due to the ulnar nerve so the ulnar nerve is your funny bone and that is in here so I kinked my ulnar nerve is what they think and that causes your ring and your pinky finger to lose strength and to and this is called like the ulnar claw and that's why these like the, the, it can get really bad but that's why these won't won't like straighten up it's because of the ulnar claw um and that's because my ulnar nerve is um it's not free it's like kinked and stuck in a place that's make, causing this to happen so they're sending me to get nerve testing done i get that tomorrow um i go in i'm not sure what time it, i want to say it's at 12. um but i gotta double check and i go in for that they're gonna check my nerves to see if there's any nerve damage and go from there if there is then they're gonna talk to a plastic surgeon and they're gonna put me in for um surgery to get to release the ulnar nerve is what they're gonna call it um yeah so it's stuck in somewhere it's not supposed to be right now they're gonna release it with a plastic surgeon if there's no way that i can do it with um by means of like physiotherapy we'll see what happens tomorrow when i go for that nerve testing i'm a little nervous about it because um my daughter had it done because they thought that she or she thought that she had carpal tunnel and so they were looking in her wrist to see like what was going on and they literally had to like dig around in her wrist which didn't sound good to me i'm like that sounds so painful um and i don't know what you mean by dig but i guess i'll find out so i'm like i'm not sure if i should take extra pills or not i might just take an extra one tomorrow morning just to be on the safe side in case it is a little bit more like stressful than like to my body than you know and then just a, a needle taking blood. It's not going to hurt me to take extra for one time. Like, you know, it's not going to hurt at all to have extra at, at any point. Um, just shouldn't be taking extra for too long because then it can ca cause you to go in the other direction and have too much cortisol, uh, which is called Cushing's disease. So if you've ever heard of Cushing's, that is the opposite of Addison's disease. So... And Cushing's is too much cortisol, Addison's is not enough. And they both have different um, symptoms and yeah. And if you have heard of it before, in the doggo world, the dogs actually can get Addison's and they can also get, um, uh, what's the other one called <laughs> that I just said two minutes ago? Addison's and Cushing's, so very common in dogs. Um, so if you ever hear those in the dog world, it's, uh, yeah, common in dogs, not so common in humans, um, less, it's a rare disease in humans. So, um, Cushing's I think is a little bit more common than Addison's is. So, um, what else? Yeah. So I'm going to take some extra pills just in case for tomorrow morning, um, or tomorrow, like at lunchtime, just to be safe, maybe, um, for the second round as well I'll double up and then just um I am taking a third round now they want me to try taking like an extra quarter of a pill 
um, for my last round of cortisol. So I'll take one when I wake up, one full pill, half a pill at lunchtime, and then a quarter of a pill around like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And that's been working okay for me. Like when I was taking a half and then a half for the third, um, which he wanted me to try, cause like he told me that I was like on fumes, basically I'm running on like very, very low. Like I don't make any cortisol at all. I'm have zero function in my adrenal glands. So, um, yeah, it's not just low, it's zero. So I need to take my cortisol in order to live. Um, and yeah, he said it's, I'm running on fumes and that I should be like taking a little bit more to keep myself going. So I'm trying the quarter when I was taking the half at the end of the day, I was like, I had so much energy. It was amazing. I was just like, wow, I feel like a million bucks. But then at like four o'clock in the morning, I'd be like, like let's go clean and what can we do now <laughs> like ready to go meanwhile I should be getting into bed and I had the worst 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 time worst time sleeping like even worse than my regular annoying times um, sleeping so I was like I can't do it um I need to get some sleep in order to fucking survive in the world and work a regular job so uh <laughs> I think I'm going to just try not to do the half at the end of the day. So that's when they decided to push it down to a quarter. So that's been working so far. I still want to stay up all night, but not as bad. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it'll and give me some more energy. Um, yeah. And hopefully we can figure out what's going on. So kind of good that this is all happening at the same time as this like ulnar nerve thing. Because honestly, I just don't have the time to take at work. Like I said... Um, it really sucks being a person with an autoimmune disease and having to work like a regular job or like regular whatever. It's not nine to five, but it's 11 day, whatever, um, a regular job and with lots of stress and no real like anything in place to make it easier for somebody that has ADHD, has um, Addison's disease, has like all this stuff in place to like um, try to be a normal person <laughs> and then like everybody else is like just normal person anyways when they start and yeah and you know what I mean it sucks it really fucking sucks all right so <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on um now I did do a live a little while ago I ended up deleting it just because I was talking about like a friend and stuff on there and I didn't want to like I was thinking about it after and my daughter and stuff and I didn't want like um the whole world to know about their like personal things so I just deleted it um there was a really nice woman that was there um for my live stream hey to you <laughs> thank you so much for coming to my live stream that was awesome um it's just bas basically just me and her we did have some like trolls at the beginning so um, shout out to her and uh thank you so much for watching I hope to do one again soon um I want to do some coloring I want to do some like diamond painting stuff like that um I did mention in the live stream though and I kind of wanted to just give you guys an update there but it didn't end up working out that way because like I said I ended up talking about like my daughter and my friend and stuff um and I was like I don't know how much they really want this to be online so I'm just gonna forget about that um yeah so I think what I'm going to do, I've been contemplating this for a little while because I'm like, my YouTube channel is not doing the greatest. Um, of course, I'm not like regular at posting at all. I do terrible at that. Um, I need to get my shit together. If like right now, if where I'm like not working, I can probably get up a couple of videos hopefully before I go back and then we'll go from there. I think Dauntingly Diana is going to just become a vlog channel and that's it. So we're going to do vlogs on my life. We're going to talk about Addison's disease. We're going to talk about my um, gothic life and um, doing creepy arts and crafts. Maybe the gothic jewelry if that comes back again, which I'm hoping it will. Um, and all that stuff will be on this channel. And I'm going to take the hauls and the clothing and just put them on a different channel just so I can break them up a little bit because I feel like that is sort of like overtaking this channel and the other stuff is not really like becoming as popular as you know what I mean the hauls and the, the fashion stuff so I'm thinking of um, setting up another channel it's just gonna be called something like Die's Creepy Closet or something like that and there is where I will do the 
um, the halls, anything like, not that I can afford halls right now, but if I go to do like a thrift um, thing, like there's a thrift shop in town that I've been meaning to go check out, uh, a couple of them that I've meaning, been meaning to check out. So I'm going to go try to get those in and, you know, stuff like that. Fashion things will all be on that other channel. And so stay tuned for that. Um, I will put up in my channel on Dauntingly and on the other one when, um, when it starts. And hopefully you guys will follow me over there if you're interested in the clothing things. And if not, well, you're not going to see all that uh, fashion crap on here anymore. <laughs> it's going to be on the other channel. Um, so yeah, so this will just be for like my life, uh, my crafting, my sickness, my um, the struggles <laughs> and everything. And, and the good times as well, of course. Um, and I did put the, the camping channel I started already. It's called Goth and Squatch Camping. Um, that I'm just kind of doing for like keeping memories and stuff like that. And I do like, I, I love watching camping videos. So like if you are like that too, please come over and check it out. There's going to be lots of like camping aesthetic and um, camping gear because I spent a lot of time shopping for new camping gear and stuff like that. The tent is like so cool way more expensive than I wanted it to be, but it is very cool. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna talk about my adventures with uh, camping on that. And this uh, this winter, actually, I want to try, I want to put my tent to the test and I'm going to do a backyard camp when it like snows, my first, the first big snowfall <coughs> that I can plan to do this. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to test out my, um, my wood stove. <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to test out the wood stove. I'm going to test out the tent um, in the winter weather and see how it goes. Um, see if it heats up enough with that little um, stove that I have because it's a very tiny one. <laughs> but it is a tiny tent as well. It's like a two to four person. So yeah, it's um, hopefully it'll, be, it'll work out good. I got the stove. I got the chimney all ready to go. <coughs> I'm actually really looking forward to that. Why am I so strange? I'm like on a super um, hyper focus on camping right now, so I'm like, sorry, I'm just excited to go do it. <laughs> and like even just doing it in my backyard, which I will watch um, another camping channel that mentioned about camping in your backyard, like just do it, it's fun. I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> that is life right now. And um, hoping that things will get better. Here soon. Um, stress has definitely come down a lot. I'm hoping that it will just continue to come down and hopefully we figure out what's going on with my body and um, why it's been so weird lately. Um, I also have some like weird, um, they actually asked me at my specialist if I had noticed some dark patches on my skin. I'm like, no, I don't think so. Like I didn't really notice anything, any changes. But now that I'm like, overanalyzing myself I'm like I do see some new patches like over here um there's a couple things like on my forehead that I'm like oh, yeah it kind of looks like there's a couple new ones and I've also been having um getting rashes again which is really weird so this is my arm right now I don't know if you can see it very well in the uh, light but you can see there's a bunch of red spots there and that's from the rash um that I got when I um there, it's on both arms and I had this same rash when I first started feeling the symptoms for Addison's disease. So like when I was working um, at Cloud 5, I was working in the office at that time and that is the very first thing that I noticed that was this really itchy rash on my arms after the uh, like the darkness showed up and the uh, <clears throat> and the like no appetite. So it was, uh, I guess not the very first thing, but it would have been close second after the, after the loss of appetite, um, or close third, I guess. I don't, I don't know, guys. There's so many, so many symptoms. So, um, yeah, so it was one of the, one of the few things that I noticed that visually happened while I was, um, dealing with the Addison's disease. Um, at one point I get, I got it all over my back as well. It was so itchy and so painful. And every time you scratch it, like just a bunch of friggin' scabs would show up on, on the top of the, the little bumps. And uh, yeah, you know, it was just really, really annoying. And uh, that's what's happening right now. So hopefully with all the blood tests and everything we're doing, we can get, find out what's going on. Hopefully we get this hand figured out as well and I can get back to work before the new year. Um, <clears throat> not that I really want to go back to work because work is really stressful as well. 
right before I left work, they were um, implementing, um, they were adding calls onto us per day. So like it, for, uh, when I first started, we were supposed to get uh, 80 calls per day. <clears throat> and then I went up to 88, then or 90 or something, and that went up to 100. Now we're at 110. So like they just keep adding more and more on us. And I'm like, I can't keep up with this. And the ADHD, like going from an inbound call to doing outbounds was so hard for me. And I'm like, I, you don't understand how difficult it is for me to, to switch from one task to another. Um, it takes a lot and I get very distracted. I get very like, I don't know what I'm doing. It takes me a lot longer than the average person to go from one thing to another. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and I feel like they're not going to allow that unless they, um, unless they like have a full diagnosis from the doctor, which is such a pain to do these days. Like, <laughs> I remember how much of a pain it was to get my daughter diagnosed with the ADHD. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> I really don't. But whatever, it is what it is. If I want the help. I'm gonna have to and then I'm like I don't want to take the medication for it either because I already am taking like 10 goddamn pills a day I don't need any more <laughs> I don't want any more and I from what I hear the uh, side effects of taking medication for your ADHD just ba basically like dull your whole like outlook on life like <laughs> basically I'm like my daughter has told me so many times that it just the side effects are not as much as good as the the benefits from the medication so yeah there's that so yeah life has been stressful and if I could hit it big and not have to work anymore at a regular job and just have like my like, just do some videos or do my thing every day that would be great so I know there's people out there that do it so why can't I just haven't hit it off yet <laughs> I'm trying making a little bit of money off of Facebook but not a whole lot yeah so um, Facebook you don't get a payout until you make a hundred dollars and I think I'm at eight dollars right now <laughs> and I just started making money like a couple months ago or something so yeah <clears throat> yeah deep contemplation Okay, well, I'm gonna let you guys go. Stay tuned. I'm gonna work on getting the YouTube channel all figured out here in the next little bit. I'm gonna split up the uh, Dauntingly Diana and the Dyes Creepy Closet. <laughs> so let's stay tuned for that new channel and um, and uh, st stick with me on Dauntingly Diana if you're into the vlog stuff. So like life and um, Addison's disease and all that stuff. Um, Otherwise, go to the new channel, and uh, and if you're into the camping, check us out. It's Goth and Squatch Camping, and uh, we have a couple of videos up there now. Um, mostly shorts with like our camping gear and stuff like that, but a, a, but one uh, long video with like the setup of the tent and stuff like that in it, and our first camping experience with it. So you can go check that out. <clears throat> it's at the Fundy National Park, and uh, and yeah. So enjoy and. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. Otherwise, just stay tuned for some new stuff coming. And I hope you guys are all having like a better um, year than I am. And 2025 is on its way. Hopefully, it'll be good for all of us. Who knows? Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, we're already starting off on a bad foot on, in 2025 with a certain somebody coming into the presidency. But I, I just, it is what it is at this point. The world just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And that's what we got to deal with. Um, yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> I love you. Um, have a good day wherever you are. Good day, night. Um, and stay tuned for more things with your girl. And, uh, yeah, love you. Mwah.